Well, finally, the third part of my exciting discussion of inflation. Now, part one explained how monetary policy could not possibly by itself cause inflation, and most certainly not in the fashion argued by that damn Milton Friedman and his monitors buddies. Now, part two went over one kind of inflation, that caused by market power, and the kind of market power that is had by entities like OPEC and the now imprisoned Martin Shkreli. You know, all this time I thought his name was Shrelke. No wonder he didn't get my birthday card. Anyway, this time around, I'm going to give you another kind of inflation, but I'm going to do the same as last time. I'm going to start with a specific historical example and then work toward generalizing it into a theory. And we're going to go back to my favorite period of history, World War II. That's when the U.S. single-handedly beat the Nazis. Now, granted, for a long time there, we was isolationists that wanted nothing to do with the war while Hitler was marching through Poland and Denmark and Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Yugoslavia, Greece, and Russia, and we didn't actually get involved until we were attacked personally, and Hitler had to declare war on us, which he did on December 10, 1941, but we had been itching to rip the Third Reich a new one for years, and that's just what we did once we got around to it. Well, economically, the story of World War II is a story of fiscal policy. We undertook massive budget deficits in order to fight the war. Now, this created a tremendous amount of demand, kind of like back when I was single. I mean, so much so that we ran below 2% unemployment for several years. Bully! Oh, wait, that's the other Roosevelt. Well, anyway, here's the deal. Not only were we creating massive amounts of employment and income, but we were actually lowering the quantity of consumer goods by redirecting production towards a war effort. And that, my friends, is a recipe for inflation. Now, likely as not, it would have been an issue even if we hadn't been restricting supply at the same time, but we were, and as a result, the U.S. decided to undertake rationing. And so we also raised taxes and got people by them war bonds to distract them from spending money. All right, let's generalize on that uh, into a, a basic theory. Uh, when demand in the macroeconomy increases so fast that supply can't keep up, we see inflation. Now, to emphasize, this is not a story of monetary policy. It is about fiscal policy. Fiscal policy can cause inflation. But let's dig a little deeper. You remember in the last video how I mentioned that inflation never makes everyone worse off? I mean, it can't. If you're paying more, somebody's getting more. Nor do all prices, and remember, a price for you is income for the seller. All prices don't rise by the same amount at the same time. Inflation creates winners and losers. And it is in determining specifically who they are that we can figure out what the appropriate policy response is. So, like in the last video where the inflation was a function of market power, uh, like say in the healthcare industry, we can decide to regulate the healthcare industry or break it up, break up all them healthcare providers. And in this way, we get at the root cause of the inflation on the assumption that folks getting richer just because they can avoid competition is not the American way. Now, what about this inflation caused by increasing demand? Well, that, my friend, is a horse of a different color. You will find that in many instances, we might actually argue that inflation like this is perfectly fine. Let it happen. I'll explain. Uh, let, let's say there is an economic expansion occurring under non-wartime circumstances like in the 1990s. Unemployment is falling, incomes are rising, everything is great. And let's further say that folks enjoying these new higher incomes are deciding to have new homes built. Now, these aren't speculative purchases, but families who plan to move in. But what if, in the midst of all this, a brick shortage develops and brick prices start to rise? Oh no, cries the Federal Reserve, sounds like we need to jack up interest rates in order to cause a recession. Well, notwithstanding the fact that there is a mountain of evidence that people react indifferently to interest rate changes, think about this. What if we just let the price of bricks go up? What would happen next? Well, brick industry profits would rise, leading entrepreneurs to make more bricks. Consumers would substitute away from bricks towards wood and whatever the hell else people use to build houses. New home prices would rise so that people might opt to buy older houses or smaller houses or live in apartments. Now, which of these is a negative economic outcome? I mean, do we begrudge the brick manufacturer the higher profits when they're making something that's in high demand? Are we upset that entrepreneurs decide to make more bricks? Do we think it's wrong that consumers substitute towards other prices, I'm sorry, other products when prices go up? That's what the market's supposed to do. I find it one of the great ironies of economic policy that our central bank wants to step in and stop the market from doing one of the things it actually does relatively well. 
When prices start to rise due to increasing demand, good for those who are reaping the benefit. It is not due to them avoiding competition like that Shkreli guy. It's because they faced competition and came out on top. America. Now, of course, the World War II situation was different because we were both creating jobs and income and reducing the availability of key goods like gasoline. And in order to make sure that it was not the case that only the wealthy could afford gas, they rationed it. And actually, uh, th this can make a general rule out of this. I mean, for example, uh, in the earlier situation there with housing, uh, if the housing prices are going up, you couldn't make an argument for government intervention or regulation if this is something that is vital to people's lives. Uh, but my point here is our knee-jerk reaction to rising prices caused by economic prosperity should not be to throw the economy into recession. And yet, while our government does precisely that, they try to stop inflation caused by prosperity, they let most of the market power issues go. That's like getting angry every time your kids stay up past their bedtime to study or, or help orphans, but ignore it when they're up at 2 a.m. on a school night playing Xbox and snorting cocaine. Makes about as much sense as a kickstand on a horse. Well, that's all I really wanted to say about inflation. This was not intended to be an in-depth coverage. I just wanted to point out some of the errors that people make and push folks in the right direction. Bottom line, that damn money growth leads to inflation view falls well short of giving us an explanation of how inflation works. Before I go, let me, let me mention one more thing. You know something else that gives the Fed saddle sores? Rising wages. They get all worried and start talking about interest rate hikes whenever wages go up. So, we've got income distribution problems that are so serious that both political parties went on about the disintegration of the middle class during the presidential campaign. And yet, we should throw the economy into recession if wages are rising. Who the hell's in charge of this monkey farm anyway? Thank you.